Boxing is a spectator sport. Without spectators, there'd be no money in boxing. The amount of money that a fighter or a particular fight can generate is down to the amount of public interest, the amount of spectators who want to spectate. So unless you're extremely popular, as in very well liked, like someone like a Manny Pacquiao, then you better be hated to the point where people are feverishly clamoring to see you lose. Similar to how it was for Chris Eubank in his heyday or Prince Nassim in his early to mid-career or even Floyd Mayweather right now. You, be, you better make so much of a villain of yourself outside the ring on a constant basis, staying in the headlines, that the hatred people have for you actually works for you in a commercial sense. This is something that Adonis Stevenson seems to not understand. Because Adonis Stevenson, outside of Canada, is still relatively unknown. The hardcore boxing contingent know about him, but they seem to lose all respect for him as a fighter when he ducked the fight with Sergei Kovalev, which they already had a verbal agreement for. If you're going to make a move like that, then you better have a contingency plan. Now, he thought he was going to go fight Bernard Hopkins. He thought that he could go and take what he perceives to be an easier fight and sail off into the sunset and live happily ever after. Adonis Stevenson basically turned his back on the hardcore boxing crowd. If you don't make it with the hardcore boxing crowd in the beginning, then it's going to be extremely difficult to make it with any type of boxing crowd in the future. The hardcore boxing crowd are the bread and butter of boxing to some extent. Obviously, the casual fans are very important, but once the hardcore boxing crowd create a buzz for you, it's only a matter of time before the casual fans catch on. So Adonis Stevenson, from a commercial point of view, shot himself in the foot when he turned his back on the Kovalev fight. And now, as you see, Bernard Hopkins has walked away from the negotiating table and he's decided to go fight Kovalev, the man that Adonis Stevenson wasn't willing to fight. So now Adonis Stevenson is in a position where he's lost the respect of the hardcore fans and he's without a big opponent. I mean, that was the whole reason he went over to Showtime. He was hoping to get a big fight with Bernard Hopkins. He's definitely not going to get a Carl Frutch fight. That's the other fight that he wanted. Where is, there, where is there for him to go? It seems that desperate times calls for, you know, call for desperate measures because apparently Adonis Stevenson is trying to line up a fight with his stablemate and actually one of his best friends in real life, Jean Pascal. Both him and Pascal are Haitian Canadians. They did actually fight in the amateurs. And I believe there's a clip on YouTube. Go watch it. Of them fighting in the amateurs. It was a very, very long time ago. I believe Pascal won the fight. I'm not 100% sure about that. But I believe Pascal, I think, won on points. The full fight is not up though. But certainly in the clip you see, Pascal was getting the better of it. Although it was a long time ago. And it was before they became really close friends. And when I say they're close friends, apparently these guys are tight. Like they hang out together. They know each other's families. They're tight now. When they fought in the amateurs, they weren't really tight like that. Okay, so he's having to actually try and line up a fight against one of his best friends. Now, friends do fight in boxing, no doubt about it. But they only tend to fight when there's no other option. 
Andre Ward and Andre Durrell are good friends. They haven't fought. <laughs> okay, both guys are trying to go in a different direction because they're friends. Uh, yeah, you could say that Deontay Wilder and Malik Scott fought, but I question whether that was really a fight. <laughs> anyway, that's a separate issue. So Adonis Stevenson, in the end, has got his comeuppance. You can't disrespect the hardcore boxing fans like that, not without a seriously good contingency plan, which he didn't have. He wanted the big money from the Hopkins fight. And I guess Hopkins wasn't willing to give up the kind of money that Stevenson wanted. And remember, Hopkins is really the marquee name more so than Stevenson. Stevenson might be a big shot in Canada, but in terms of worldwide boxing, and certainly from the standpoint of the casual fans, and also with the network, certainly with Showtime, Hopkins is the commodity, not Stevenson. So it was naive and maybe arrogant of Stevenson to go into the Hopkins fight thinking that he was the quote-unquote A-side. Hopkins, after all, does have two belts. So, Stevenson has left himself in a poor position. Sometimes in boxing, you have to gamble, especially in the early days. I know Stevenson is in his mid-30s mid now, so he's just looking for the biggest fights. He got his opportunity against Chad Dawson, and since then, he hasn't really wanted to get in the ring with the very, very toughest guys out there. Certainly not Kovalev anyway. Okay, he's he's wanted to get in the ring with guys who he 100% believes he can beat. He 100% believes he can beat uh, Bernard Hopkins. Whether or not he can, that's another point, but he, he certainly believes it. He 100% believes he can beat Carl Froch. You know, he's trying to take a fight now with Jean Pascal, his friend. I don't know how much of a real fight that would be how much of a sparring session it would be, how competitive they are even though they're friends, who knows? It's a desperate move either way. But, you know, like I say, in boxing, sometimes you have to gamble, you have to take the hard fights if you want to build up that hardcore uh, foundation of fans that's, that are going to see you in good stead for the future. You have to do it. And I was watching an interview today, actually, with Kathy Duva. And she was asked whether she was worried about Sergei Kovalev taking the Hopkins fight, given the fact that Hopkins has derailed so many up-and-coming, in-their-prime fighters over the years. And Kathy Duva said, not at all. Not at all. Boxing is about risks. You can't be afraid to lose. All the greatest fighters throughout history, certainly the vast majority of them, have all lost. Their losses don't define them. If they're truly great, their losses won't define them. It's their victories that will define them. Bernard Hopkins has lost. You know, she pointed out people like Lennox Lewis, uh, you know, Tommy Hearn, Sugar Ray Leonard, all them kind of people had lost. Those losses don't define them. People remember. Leonard more for the fights that he won They don't remember the Roberto Duran loss as much His first loss No, they remember the other fights That he won, the great nights So Taking a risk With Kovalev, she don't even see it as uh, Necessarily taking a risk She sees it as an opportunity To fight the best And prove you're the best And You know, win or lose the fact that he's taking on, he's trying to take on the best is going to stand him in good stead with the hardcore boxing fans. You know, Kovalev himself is not a big name in boxing outside of the hardcore. But because he's taking on a Hopkins right now, then that means he's giving himself the opportunity to become known outside of the boxing hardcore, to cross over and become a commercial star. He's given himself that opportunity now with this fight, if he can win it. So he understands what, what needs to be done. Whereas Adonis Stevenson, maybe he felt like he'd made it before he'd really made it. I don't know. I mean, he'd made it to a certain level, but you got to be, if, if he really wants the big money, which is what he's looking for, 
then being big in Canada just ain't going to cut it. Canada's a f relatively small country in terms of population and certainly in terms of a boxing audience. He should have taken the risk and fought Kovalev when he had the opportunity. He tried to play the game, but the game played him. Sometimes you got to respect the game for the game to respect you. We'll see if Adonis Stevenson learns his lesson this time. I don't know. Uh, drop your comments below. What do you feel about Stevenson versus Pascal? Do you think Stevenson will ever fight Kovalev in the future? I guess it depends what happens with Kovalev Hopkins and how Kovalev looks. Depends how Kovalev's career pans out. But if Kovalev beats Hopkins and he's still dangerous, do you think Stevenson will take that fight? Or you think we'll just try and stay up in Canada and, you know, stay inside his envelope? I don't know, man. I would like to see, obviously, Stevenson fight Kovalev. Um, I've said recently, after the after Kovalev's latest defense of his title, that from a stylistic point of view, I think Stevenson's got a better chance than I initially did. Not just because Kovalev got dropped even though the guy stood on his foot, but just the look of the fight. The guy that uh, Kovalev fought was a southpaw, somewhat slick, with a wide foot stance. And he was able to create distance quite easily between himself and Kovalev, simply by sticking his right, uh, right hand out and pulling with that right jab. And he was able to create distance and draw Kovalev's lead, make him miss and count with a straight left hand. He did that several times in the fight. And this is a guy who is nowhere near as powerful as Adonis Stevenson. He don't have anywhere near the arm length of Adonis Stevenson, but he was fighting with a technique that was not dissimilar to the way Stevenson fights. And yes, it only worked for him for a round and a half. But he landed some shots within that round and a half. And with Adonis Stevenson, it may only take one or two good shots. Anyone who thinks that Sergei Kovalev can withstand a clean flush punch from, from Adonis Stevenson's left hand without being hurt or dropped is living in a dream world. Kovalev has been knocked out as an amateur and apparently he was also knocked out in sparring by Gennady Golovkin he was also dropped by Darnell Boone he is vulnerable yes Stevenson's vulnerable himself obviously he was knocked out by Boone he was dropped by Fonfara what we have is a situation where both guys have the ability to knock each other out with relatively few punches. That's the situation we're looking at when, you, when it comes to Stevenson Kovalev. So it's going to be a case of who lands first then, isn't it? If both guys have got the power to knock the other one out, then it's who lands first. And on the evidence of Kovalev's last fight, based on the way uh, Caparello, I believe he was called, was able to move and create distance for that round and a half. And remember, Stevenson's a fast starter. He's known for dropping guys early. Go look at his, you know, recent fights. He's been hurting and dropping guys. I think in every single fight since the uh, Chad Dawson fight, he's had his opponent hurt in the first round or in the first two rounds. Hurt or down. So he starts fast. He's very sharp early on. Yes, he had trouble with Fonfara in the later rounds when he started gassing out because Fonfara was very tough. He was able to absorb the punishment that Stevenson put on him and persevere will Kovalev be able to absorb the punishment that Fonfara absorbed Fonfara is a different kind of fighter he's taller than Kovalev got longer arms different type of physical presence holds his hands in a different position so it's, it's a different fight again I'm not here saying that I'm 100% sure Stevenson would beat Kovalev no I'm definitely not saying that I see it as a very very competitive fight all I'm saying is based on Kovalev's last fight 
I give Stevenson more of a chance than I previously did because the more you see of a fighter, the more you learn about him. That's all. But whether or not that fight will actually take place in the future, who knows? I hope it does, but I can't call it. Uh, <laughs> drop your comments below, people. This is Hatman, I'm out.